spoke a word 
won't climb up coming after me. Oh, Jesus. Snow wall, you won't kick down. Lie, you won't tear down coming after me. So shadow.
Amen, church. Let's just stay in the spirit. Let's just keep our eyes on Jesus right now because the words of this song have been in my heart all day. And I want you to sing it again to the Lord with me. Make this an anthem because this is what the Lord is leading us to do. He wants us to hear his voice. He wants us to, to make him our priority this year because what we've been through this year is preparing us to be in our closets, to seek him with all of our hearts, to look at our circumstances and say, this is not going to define us. This is not going to keep us down. Lord God, you can lead us into the next step, into the beyond, because your hand is on us. And our faith is rising, church. Our faith is not beat down because we have an active God. What you believe in, church, who you believe in, the truth matters. And we pray to the living God whose active hand has reached down into our lives and he can change things. You and I, we pray to the God who can move mountains because we can focus our eyes on him and say, in our weakness, Lord, you can rescue us. You can heal us. You can change my circumstances, God. You can motivate me to jump into someone else's life and change their life in your name. You know what, God, guys? Let's look at Jesus one more time. And let's, can we sing that chorus again? And let's sing that to him and say, God, whatever you want, I will obey it because you are worthy. You, you, you are trustworthy. I can trust you for 2021. I can trust you because you've gotten me through this year. You will be there for us, God. And I pledge my need to you as Joshua said, Choose this day whom you will serve. As for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. Let's sing it together. Amen, Jesus. Heavenly Father, Lord, we just pray to you right now as a body of believers. Lord, we cry out in faith. We cry out in desperacy. Lord, knowing that we come to a God who is embracing us, embracing us right now. Holy Spirit, fill this place. Spark faith in us, Lord. Spark boldness. Lord, we want our next steps in this year to make a true difference, God. Lord, we want to honor you with every step we take, with every breath we take, with everything that we say and do. May it reflect your love and, and honor you, O oh God. Lord, I pray this blessing over each one of us that as we examine ourselves, as we examine what we have done this year, Lord, we repent. Father God, we lay down the sins that we've committed. Lord, we repent. We, we want to place them here and acknowledge it. Lord Jesus, we have done things that we shouldn't have and we, we repent, oh Lord. And in that repentance, as we turn to you, oh Jesus, you empower us, God. Lord, you fill us. Your grace is so close. For when we turn and empty our hands of this world and embrace yours, God, you fill us with your love and healing. And, and Lord, I pray that each one of us here, Lord, we would mark our steps and that we would see that your steps are filled as we take our steps, Lord. You take your steps through us, Lord Jesus. And I praise you, Lord, for your blessing.
that you are pouring out on each one of us right now. Bless us, Lord. Bless your church. For this year is your year. Your year to make a mark in each one of us. In Jesus, in Jesus' holy and precious name we pray. Amen. Amen, church. Woo, let's give the Lord a clap offering. Amen. Hallelujah. You know, at this time, you know, we don't want to interrupt the flow of the Spirit and uh, the flow of the worship service tonight, but we do want to get on to the next piece. And I, our head pastor here, Pastor John, is here, and I want to just pass, open the, pass off the mic to him. Brother. All right. Good evening, everybody. Happy New Year. Great to see you. This is the one night I tell them I don't want to be on the stage. Sometimes a pastor just needs to attend something and just worship and bless, right? But, I, but I'm happy to greet you. I have my, uh, my, 20 for 20, my 21 for 21 mask. They just came into the office because we're believing for 21 powerful days to kick off 2021. So you're going to hear about that. On, uh, on Sunday, I want to give you just a word that the Lord's been kind of birthing in my heart really quickly. I'm not preaching or speaking, um, but just a verse. For one thing, I just love being with everybody uh, on New Year's Eve service. Bliss, thank you so much for putting this together every year. One of our senior elders is just... <laughs> you know it's late when I need to dismiss my, uh, my phone is in sleep mode right now. It's supposed to be sleeping right now. Uh... Matthew chapter 9, uh, verse 17. Neither do people pour new wine into old wineskins. If they do, the skin will burst. The wine will run out and the wineskins will be ruined. No, they pour new wine into new wineskins and both will be preserved. Amen. Give me my thought for this for the new year. 2020 has been a crazy year, right? I believe it's an old wineskin. And it's important that we don't pour what God wants to do in the new year through an old wineskin. It'll just burst. Amen? So we pour new wine into a new wineskin, and both will be preserved. It's going to be really easy as God begins to do things new in this year that we're going to run it through the calculations and the mindsets of 2020, but it's an old wineskin. Let's put the, things, the new things that God wants to do Let's let it run through and pour into 2021 because God has new wine and he has a new wineskin that he wants to do in every one of our lives. Don't let what God wants to do in this year be ruined by what happened last year. Last year is gone. It's moving on. Amen? And some things still might look a little different for a little while, but I promise you God has new things for your life, your family, for our church, for our children. Let's not run them through the filter of 2020. Let's put them into 2021 where God has ordained them to fit. Amen? That's my word of encouragement. After that, I'm done for the rest of the night, Bliss. Happy to worship and to listen to some great preaching and pray in the new year. You're up now? Hey, I love you all. It's so good to be here tonight. I'm so happy to, to be here and, and praying in the new year with you. Oh, thank you. <laughs> I love that. The, the, uh, it's chosen, right? Yes, yes. Like it's like an uh, unashamed plug. <laughs> oh, I love it. I We've been binge watching as a family, and yeah. we loved it. Um, Happy New Year's. I, I'm so excited to be back here. Um, it's been a while to um, worship together, um, but thank God for this day. Amen? As I was uh, praying and asking the Lord um, for a word that God would share with us and encourage us. The Lord kept putting this word in my spirit. And if you're writing this down, please write it down. It's called the seed. And I kept asking the Lord, no, that's not big enough of a word. Um, I have a few minutes that I need to share. And, and the Lord said, go to Genesis chapter 8, verse 22. And it says, for as long as earth lasts, seed time and harvest cold and heat, summer and winter, day and night will never stop. So as I started reading this and I tried to process it, the Lord said, it is a principle that will never stop. Seed, time, and harvest. Seed 
if you're writing this down, equals potential. Time equals purpose. Harvest equals product or produce. So potential, purpose, and produce. So I said, God, what are you trying to tell me? So I went to Ecclesiastes uh, chapter 3. And you go and there's 29 seasons or times mentioned there. It says time to be born, time to die. Time to plant, time to pluck up what you planted. Time to be joyful, time to be sorrowful. But nowhere does it say time to retreat, time to give up. Are you guys catching this? In all the seasons that God has ordained, he wants us to do certain things, but don't, and, and I thank God because Pastor John didn't steal the whole message. You know, it's like, don't, don't go into what the world or the society norms dictate. And God said, seed time and harvest. See, your seed and harvest will not look the same. Come on, somebody. Because many times we look at the seed and try to envision the harvest. But how many know that the seed and harvest look completely different? And I feel awkward saying this because I'm not the gardener. My dad is an avid gardener. And he starts like March, April time frame starts to germinate the seeds. And, and, and half of the times I think it's garbage and I tried to throw it out. And he gets all upset because he has them in like these crinkled up, you know, uh, cups. And, and he has these uh, little, you know, uh, tissues or napkins that he's soaked up. Because what he's trying to do is saturate the seed. Are you guys catching? Some of you are shaking your head. Uh, I would be like, I don't know what you're talking about. If you say debits and credits, I can hang with you. Uh, but, you know, uh, some of you got that. But, okay. Uh, but, but so, so what happens is th there is a, a seed time and harvest. But the I interesting part is when the seed is concealed, nobody sees anything. Until something is revealed. See, seed grows in the dark places. Inside the dirt, inside the place where nobody sees activity. Isn't it amazing that God will start to do something in your life when nobody sees what's happening? It's under the surface. As, as I'm studying this, the Lord started to encourage me, saying, listen, Bliss, it's interesting as I started to study this, you know, both planting and burying look the same on the surface. I pray that some of you catch this tonight because it was a breakthrough for me as I started diving in. Planting and burying look the same from the surface. However, <laughs> you need to do some digging for both, right? You need to, 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 to bury, you need to dig. To, to plant, you need to dig. But see, one is temporary. Come on, say this with me, temporary. The other one is permanent. See, many times we make a lifetime out of a season that God has put us in. I'm going somewhere, so hang with me. Sometimes God puts us through some tough times, so some tears come out and, and some pain happens, but God wants to use those tears as fertilizer to saturate the seed that he has put inside of us. My goodness, I pray that you catch this tonight. See, one is temporary, the other one is permanent. See, burying has a destination. That's it. It's, it's, you're there. But planting has a destiny. Are you guys catching this? It was powerful when I'm starting to do... See, the dirt or your environment that you're put in does not define your destiny. <laughs> It does not define your destiny. It may depict a destination, but it doesn't define your destiny. That's why I said uh, earlier, and, and I hope you caught this, don't make a lifetime out of a season that God has you in. See, the seed transforms or metamorphoses and, and comes out bigger and better than when it was concealed. So you have to wait until what God has invested comes to fruition. 
and I started thinking about it. When God gives you something, he has a period of incubation. Say this with me, incubation. And, and you know, especially the thing, thought that comes to mind is my sister-in-law is expecting and we're talking all this baby stuff and, you know, thinking about all this stuff. There's a period of time in human life, right, they, they usually say 36 to 40 weeks, right, or we round it to nine months. There's an incubation period. What happens? Nobody's seeing what's happening on the outside. Are you guys catching this? Except for the mama. Every once in a while, they'll be like, oh, I felt that kick. Some of you looking at me judgy. I'm just going based on what people tell me. Don't be judging, all right? This, this is a food baby. All right. All right. Let, let's get back. All right. So, so, see, God is incubating what he has invested can I share with you in, in, in the few minutes I have left a story from the book of Judges? And I'm going to go quickly, so hang with me. It's Judges chapter 6 through chapter 8. It's the story of Gideon. When God sees Gideon, he sees something else than what he sees himself. In Judges chapter 6 verse 12, the angel of the Lord appears unto Gideon and says, Thou mighty man of valor. The Lord is with you, thou mighty man of valor. Meanwhile, I'm scratching my head. The guy is hiding in his wine press, threshing wheat. That means normally you thresh wheat away from the house because it creates a lot of dust. The wine press is right next to the house because they like to do fresh wine. So, but he's doing something to hide the blessings from the people that called Midianites, that were trying to steal away his blessings. But see, God is not looking at the current when he speaks something in your life. He is looking at the end because he is the alpha and the omega. He sees the end from the beginning. When he says something in your life, he's calling out something in the future. And when he is seeing you here, come on. It's amazing to me that he can see the seed and and talk about the fruit because he is God. For us, we are so temporal, we only see the present. So when Gideon is looking and hearing this word, it doesn't reconcile. So he's asking the Lord, pardon me, Lord, but, but how can this be? If the Lord is with us, how can all these things be going wrong? Some of you listening to me tonight, you may be saying this as a testimony for 2020. God, if you are with us, if your word is with us, if your promise is with us, how come all of this is going on? And God is trying to encourage you tonight that there is a dark season where you get to grow. Come on. How many know growth happens in the dark times? Hallelujah. Not everyone wants to hear it, but let me tell you, you know, I, I don't want to go into uh, gym examples because some of you would judge me. But, you know, when, when you're lifting weights and, and you're working out, the more, the most amount of muscle growth happens with resistance training. It's not when you push, it's when you are bringing it back. Are you catching me? Nobody sees those. Everyone sees the push moments. Everyone sees the mountaintop, but God is saying God is also the God of the valleys. He is the God that will go up on top with you and also down below. So what happens is God starts to come to Gideon and he has an affirmation, a moment of affirmation. How awesome is God that he won't come and judge you. He won't come and say, well, you're not, you're messing this up, man. You're not where you're supposed to be. He doesn't say that. He said, Gideon, you mighty man of valor. But if you and I look at Gideon and you study those chapters, you will say, he is timid. He's insecure. He's afraid. He is not doing what God has called him to do. How many know we can judge? It's easier for us to see the block in somebody else's eye, right? That's what Jesus says than to see it on our own self. So Gideon is looking and saying, oh, how can this, you know, you're looking at Gideon. How can God do this with this guy? Why would he even mess with him? But aren't you glad that God always, doesn't always call the qualified, but he always qualifies the called? So God looks at Gideon and says, listen, I want to do something in your life. But first, after the affirmation, the second thing God does is a revelation. 
He says, I am the God, hallelujah, who is going to give you victory. So he tells him the end. I'm talking to some of you today, after going through 2020 or 2020, you might have forgotten all the promises of God, but let me give you a spoiler alert. We already win. Amen. Come on. Come on. Revelations chapter 12 verse 11 says they overcame him. Who? Satan. The church has overcome Satan through the blood of the lamb and the word of their testimony. What the Lord told me is the seeds have to start to talk, start to cry out. You have to start declaring the promises of God. The moment you open your mouth and start to declare the voice, the commands and the promises of God, the enemy has to retreat. So first is affirmation, second is revelation, third is confrontation. What happens is God says, Gideon, before I can do something in your life, you got to go to your daddy's house and tear down the idol of the altar of Baal and the poles, Asherah poles. Hold on. Why are we talking about all of this? Because God cannot use an unholy vessel. God cannot use where he is not prominent and preeminent. So God says, listen, I need you to take care of some business. I can't do something with an unclean vessel. I need you to clean up. I know this is not a New Year's thing. Maybe you, you were like, oh, this is not what I really expected. I wanted something encouraging. But let me help you out. God can only do something that he promised until you take care of all of the stuff that gets in the way. The idol was in the way of what God wanted him to do. So when he pulled down the idol, see, I don't even have time to go into the details. Gideon was so scared to do it himself. He got 10 of his servants and he says, you got to help me out. I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm talking to somebody. If you can't do it yourself, grab somebody, grab your friends, grab your brother, grab your girlfriend, grab your boys and, and go and get this done. Because if you get this done, there's a victory ahead of you. All of a sudden, something happened. I don't know if you've caught this in this story. The name of Gideon changes. Because people started to notice. They wake up in the morning. They're like, who tore down the idol? See, I, I was enjoying that worship song, even though we didn't even talk with the worship team. You know, it says, break down our traditions. Break down things that are in the way. And I believe the Holy Spirit has everything unified in tonight's service. God wants to say, do a miracle in your life. But in order for him to do a miracle in your life, we got to break down the things that are in the way. And the, the thing that Gideon had to do was he had to get rid. So affirmation, revelation, confrontation. And right after confrontation, God starts to say there's a transformation. What is the transformation? He's no longer called Gideon. He's called Jerubal. Jerubal means defender or contender against Baal, which is the God. My goodness. Isn't it amazing how God can transform you and me? insignificant you and me into somebodies that can go up against principalities, powers, rulers of darkness, spiritual wickedness in high places, Bethany Church, visitors that are here tonight for the first time. Let me tell you, God has you in his hand as long as you're willing to take care of some of the stuff that is in the way of him doing what he needs to do. He can do something awesome in your life. All of a sudden, after the transformation, God is doing something in Gideon's life. He comes up in chapter 7. I'm going to go quickly. Is They get together, it says, by the well of Herod, which means fear. God says, tell the people that are afraid to go. You got to disassociate yourself in 2021 with people that don't belong in the next season. Come on. Don't keep friendships because they are going to keep you from where God wants to take you. So he had to tell people. He had 32,000 people. That's an anointing to gather 32,000 people. But what happens is God says that's too much people. And you have to understand this. I'm a math guy. I'm an accountant. So 32,000 people and they're going up against the army of 135,000 people. They're already down four to one. And God says that's too many people. I'm like, excuse me? See, God's strategies are different. He doesn't call us to do the hard stuff. He calls us to do the impossible because that's how he gets the glory. So he says, those of you are afraid, go home. 22,000 leave. I'm like, oh, Lord. 
God says, no, no, I want to do something else. I want to test their posture. He says, let them go and get the drink. Guess how they drank? The ones that were selected, the 300, got on their knees. Come on. The battle starts on your knees. Hallelujah. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Some of you are going to catch this, but because of time, i got to run. It says, and then... 300 people it was down to 300 now we are down 450 to 1 impossible Bethany Church God wants to do something in Bergen County God wants to do something in in New Jersey but you got to tear down your idols you got to get to a place of allowing the Lord to do what he wants to do it's not by might nor by power but by my spirit says the Lord God wants to do something not because of our eloquence, not because of our degree, not because of our pedigree. God wants to do it because he is God and God all by himself. Hallelujah. I feel the anointing of the Holy Spirit in this house. God wants to call somebody out. Doesn't matter what 2020 looked like. You can be like Gideon. God, why is all this happening if you have this call on my life? And God started showing me a rubber band. A rubber band doesn't go much farther until it gets stretched. Come on. Can I get somebody that's been stretched this year to raise your hands? I know this is not everybody, but oh Lord, I've been stretched. God has a different destination for you. Hallelujah. Your destiny is different. Hallelujah. Don't look at your neighbor. God has something else for you. We're approaching the new year and I'm almost closing. But let me help you out here. If the Holy Spirit is speaking to you, can you rise up to your feet? We're just going to go into worship tonight. But I want to tell you that if God has said something, in Numbers 23, 19, he said, My God is not a man that he should lie, nor the son of man that he should repent. If he has said something, he will bring it to pass. The seed is the word of God. And if we allow the word of God to start germinating in our hearts, that is the soil of our life. God will start to bring up out something that will change the topography of our life. Come on, let me help you out. It may be dry and de- you know nothing going on. All it takes is one seed to take hold. And the moment that one seed take holds, it will start to change the topography of your area in Jesus' name. Doesn't matter if you put concrete on top. Doesn't matter if you put asphalt on top. I- how many know what I'm talking about? If you have ever done gardening, you'll see a little, little, little little blade of grass cut through concrete I'm like how does this happen listen when God has put some natural laws you cannot stop natural laws God says I have put this law seed time harvest potential purpose and product when I have said something once it takes hold it will happen I'm talking to somebody 2021 it will happen What God has said in your life, it will happen. Heaven and earth shall pass away, but not one word, not one jot or tittle shall be removed from the word of God. Lord Jesus, we thank you for your presence in this house. Lord, we know that your word is true. It's right. We know, Lord, we don't want to let the feelings dictate what we are. We believe your word dictates who we are. And tonight we declare in the name of Jesus, we are victorious. Tonight we declare we are overcomers. Tonight we declare in the name of Jesus, we shall accomplish what you have called us to. We curse every plan of the enemy. We put down the enemy under our feet tonight. We take power and authority. Come on church, declare it tonight. Every plan of the enemy. We say you're under our feet in this upcoming year. We will declare the works of the Lord in Jesus name. We're going to go into a time of worship I want to encourage you guys just like Gideon did blow the trumpet in the name of Jesus and allow the presence of the Lord to move ahead of you the battle belongs to the Lord come on church let's go in to worship come on go ahead we're just gonna praise and worship the Lord and receive the blessing he has for us
as the presence of God is here. The countdown is already in. Can you just lift up your hands and just bless the Lord and just receive in this new year? Lord, we just bless you for this amazing. Come on, clap your hands if you can. Shout it out if you can. Just 20 seconds. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for another year. Thank you for blessing us. Thank you for saving us. Come on, you can do the countdown. Five, four, three, two, one. Happy New Year. Come on. Some presents. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. I don't want to quench the spirit like uh, Mark was saying, but just to take care of some human things. Please greet somebody next to you. If you don't know them, just give them an air five and blow some kisses, all right? I just want to respect personal space, but happy new year. May God bless you with a healthy and prosperous new year in Jesus' name. Come on, take a few minutes. Right after this, I'm going to have uh, Ben come and help us with uh, communion.
is good. 2021, how's that sound? <laughs> Sounds good to me. Hey, it's exciting to bring in the in, in in the new year with worship and praise and prayer and it's just the right place. I mean, I, I love your picture of of the new wineskins and have that have that wine of the spirit flowing into these new wineskins and uh, just just really excellent, excellent, excellent. Hey, I, I want to just share a couple of thoughts with you before we share communion. What what a neat way to start the new year with with communion. Yeah, you can be seated. I'm sorry. Um, so I, I'm going to read it to you, and then I want to talk to you about something God showed me as I was kind of thinking about this tonight that, that I'm really excited about. It says this, I'm in reading in Matthew chapter 26, and you know, this, this, is this, this is right before Jesus is going to the cross. He's at dinner with the guys. They're having, they're having their meal, and at the end of the meal, it, says like, it goes like this. It says, now, um, as they were eating, Jesus took bread... And after blessing it, broke it. Everybody say broke it. Say it one more time. Broke it. That's good. That's good. And he gave it to the disciples. And he said, take, eat. This is my body. And then he took the cup. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, drink it, all of you. For this is my blood of the covenant which is poured out for many. Everybody say poured out. Now I want you to see, communion is, is very interesting. This, this, this ritual that we do, this, this institution. Uh, Jesus said, do this in remembrance of me. So when we do this, we remember Jesus. I'm going to take a look at what he was saying. I, I, have, I was born with just one too few hands, so i got to shuffle things here for a second. I wanted, you to, I wanted you to see this, this. This is what he meant by bread, okay? I know you guys are going to have these little fabricated wafers, and, and they're great because they symbolize something. But, but when he had it, what he had was um, matzah. He had unleavened bread. It probably was. This is pretty manufactured, too. But he had unleavened bread, and it said, remember what it said? It said he broke it, right? Now, when you break this bread, every piece is different, right? Every little chunk is going to have different edges. It's going to be broken different ways. It's going to, it's going to be a different shape. Unlike, unlike the little wafers that we're going to eat here, every one is different. And then so he broke it, and he said, this is my body. The interesting thing is the scripture is very clear. When he was crucified, not a single bone was broken. So what is he talking about? What is he saying? Well, he's saying, my broken body, I, I take this bread and I break it and I distribute it. Sorry, <laughs> I told you I was one short on my hands today. He distributed it. He broke it and distributed it. And now each of the disciples was a part of his body. You know, Paul calls us the body of Christ. Paul says each one of us is different. Each one of us looks different. Each one of us has different gifts, different callings, different strengths, different weaknesses. And, and so when Jesus broke this up, he distributed it to his disciples. The next thing he did is he took that cup. Again, I'm short of hands. <laughs> but I want you to picture it because a picture is so good. He took a cup. But with the cup, he didn't give them each little cups. He took his cup that was poured out and he shared it with each one. He gave each, he passed it around. They took the same cup and they shared it. And he said, this cup is my blood and it's the covenant. Paul called it the mystery. He said, this is the mystery that's been hidden for ages. Christ in you, the hope of glory. So now we have the bread broken into little pieces, everyone different, distributed out into all the world. In fact, Jesus said it this way, as you go, go into all the world, right? He said, as you go, preach. So he sent all this broken up bread all his body 
distributed over all the world, going every which way, distributing, and each one different, each one bringing a different gift, a different, uh, um, a different aspect, but each one carrying that blood that blood was in, that, that oneness, that, that thing that brought the whole diverse body together was the unity of the blood of Jesus. You and I, you and me, we're blood. We're, we're blood. This is, this is tighter. This isn't just church. This is blood relation. Jesus said, when you take this cup, you drink it, you, 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 you're taking me So when we take communion tonight, which we're going to do now, you can get ready. We're going to take this bread and we're going to say, we're going to see that he he broke it and he distributed it. Each one of us is different. And we're we're each called. Now, I took you to the Great Commission there on the the bread, but I didn't take you there on the the wine. But you know, the next verse, this is in in, uh, Matthew 28, verse 19, the verse right after where he says, as you go make disciples, the next verse says, I will be with you always. That's the blood. So we have the body spread and dispersed and distributed. We have the blood holding us together. Isn't that good? Isn't that good? I just I just get so excited when I saw that. So anyway, there it is. That's what we're going to pray. We're, so now we're going to take the bread, this little wafer. I, I, I'd ask you to hold it in your hand and say this. Say this with me. This is the body of Christ. Now say this. I am the body of Christ. Now he said, take it and eat it and remember him. Father, in the name of Jesus, we take this bread. We thank you. We thank you, Lord Jesus, for the sacrifice you made. We thank you for the the fact that you allowed your body to be broken or sacrificed, that you have given us the opportunity, the, the right and the privilege to be called your sons, your sons and daughters, and you've distributed it distributed us into the world. You've dispersed us into the world so that they might see you in us. Oh, we thank you, Father. And now, then he took the cup, which was his blood, poured out. Poured out. I just, that, that's so strike. That language is so striking to me. The blood was poured out. But then he made them all drink. And so when we drink this cup, we're drinking the one cup. We're, you know, yes, we're all eat, having our little separate cups, and that's all good, and that's all safe. But you have to realize that there's only one blood. It's all, it's all the blood of Jesus. The cup, the communion cup, is what binds us together. It's what creates unity. So, Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you, Lord God, for your blood. We thank you, Lord God, for your blood. Thank you, Lord God, for the blood of the Lamb. Thank you that you poured your blood out, that you gave us this cup, this cup to drink that brings us together, that makes us all blood, that makes us all family, that makes us all one. In Jesus' name, we praise you and thank you, Father, for the blood of the Lamb. In Jesus' name, amen. Happy New Year. Hallelujah. All right, you can shout when you're done. I got this thing caught in. If you guys have the cups, the ushers will come up and just uh, collect it. I just want to bless you. Thank you for joining us with us this evening, or I should say this morning. <laughs> Happy New Year. Can you guys just stand up? I'm just going to say a blessing and read it over to you so I don't go crazy over time. In the name of Jesus Christ, I bless you with the promises of God, which are yes and amen. May the Holy Spirit make you healthy and strong in body, mind, and spirit to move in faith and expectancy. May God's angels be with you to protect and keep you. Be blessed with supernatural strength to turn your eyes from foolish, worthless, and evil things and to shut out 
the demeaning and negative. Instead, may you behold the beauty of the things that God has planned for you in 2021. That as you obey his word, may God bless your ears to hear the lovely, the uplifting and the encouraging. May your mind be strong, disciplined, balanced and faith-filled. May your feet walk in holiness and your steps be ordered by the Lord. May your hands be tender and helping, blessing those in need. May your heart be humble and receptive to one another and to the things of God, not of the world. God's grace be upon your home, that it may be a sanctuary of rest and renewal, a haven of peace where sounds of joy and laughter grace its walls, where love and unconditional acceptance of one another is the constant rule. May God give you the spiritual strength to overcome the evil one and to avoid temptation. May God's grace be upon you to fulfill your dreams and visions. May his goodness and mercy follow you all the days of your life. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May he make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May the Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. In your rising up as well as your laying down, in your walk, work as well as your leisure, in your going out as well as your coming in, may the name of the Lord be written over your life. Amen, amen, and amen. We love you and wish you a blessed and happy new year.